The 2014 KCB Kenya National Rally Championship returned with a sixth round of the KCB Safari Rally. The biggest event on the motorsport calendar, the Safari Rally first ran in 1953 to commemorate the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. The event evolved to become one of the most challenging rounds of the World Rally Championship until 2002 when it was dropped from the calendar. But it continues to be a round of the Africa Rally Championship and has lost none of its prestige. It remains the dream of many a young driver to compete and make their mark on this world famous event. This rally would return to the scene of the fifth round, run on the farms and ranches around Nanuki. It would be the first safari rally to be run entirely on closed roads, in line with international safety requirements and the WRC format. Round 5 had taken place in Nanuki and the championship had once again seen a new winner, with Jazzy Chate taking his maiden victory. The leader for much of the rally, Carl Tundo, had lost over 20 minutes with a fuel pump failure on the very last spectator stage that had seen him drop to ninth. The event welcomed drivers from across Africa, including this year's ARC title leader Gary Chains from the Ivory Coast, who was visiting Kenya for the first time, and Jazz Mangat, making a welcome return after being a regular face during the 2013 season. Jassy Chate is the only Kenyan registered to compete for ARC points this year, and having won the Tanzanian round of the championship early in the season, he arrived at the start also leading the KNRC standings. This year's safari once again kicked off from the Kenyatta International Conference Centre in the heart of Kenya's capital, Nairobi, with the crews lining up at the start in the shadow of Kenya's first president, Jomo Kenyatta. Underlying the importance the event holds in the hearts of Kenyans and the desire to return the rally to the world stage, Kenya's president and commander-in-chief, His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, was on hand to flag away the cars and offer his government's support and commitment to the event. This uh, particular event, as many of you will know, was a major highlight in the Kenyan calendar many years ago, and we want to bring it back to that status that it once had. Mine is to assure you that my government will work closely together with you so that that target of 2017, as Vora has said, let's see if we can make it, let's get ourselves back on the map, let's get uh, motorsports back to what it used to be, and you can count on my full support. First away would be Bald of Chaga, the defending champion and last year's safari winner in his Mitsubishi Evo 10. Tundo had switched back to his Proton S2000 for the event and was second away, hoping to regain the safari crown he won in 2012. Quentin Mitchell returned to the championship in his brand new Skoda Fabia S2000, which had literally arrived in Nairobi three hours before the start of the rally. He had not had the chance to do any testing, and it would also be the first time he had competed in a left-hand drive car. The first day's action took the crews to the Megara estate in Kiambu for a run through a spectator stage, giving fans in Nairobi a chance to enjoy the event before it headed towards Mount Kenya, where the remainder of the rally would be held. The cars then had a long transport section to Lengetia for the second stage near Narrow Moro. This would be the longest stage of the day and was a perfect mixture of tight technical elements at the start followed by very fast sweeping sections. The final stage of the day would take the crews back to the Batian Spectator stage just outside Nanyuki town for the first of several runs. After a long service, the crews would then stop at the Sportsman's Arms Hotel for the overnight Park Ferme. The Migar stage would be similar to that run on the Kiambu event, but with a new section in the middle that would reduce the advantage for local crews. Baldiv Chaga attacked from the off. Not wanting to let his rivals get the upper hand on him, he was joint fastest despite sweeping the road of the loose top surface. Carl Tundo set an identical time of 5 minutes 37 seconds in the Proton as the battle for top honours commenced. This despite the two drivers using different lines through the corners. Ian 
Duncan was returning to action after missing Nanuki, with a new sponsor and a change of colour scheme, he went third fastest, eight seconds slower than the leading pair. Chate was flying the Kenyan flag, and buoyed by his recent victory, he went fourth fastest, a further second behind Duncan. Kavanagh was hoping for a better run in his Proton S2000 after retiring from the last event. He was looking to make up some extra miles as he continued to learn his way around the car. Fifth fastest was a good start. Manvir Barian was another driver making a welcome return and was the fastest Subaru driver going sixth fastest. Raji Barrage went seventh fastest, keen to fight for a podium place after scoring his best ever result on the Nanyuki round. Rajbir Rai started cautiously and lost 15 seconds to the leaders. Going eighth fastest, he would need to make up ground on the next stage. Onka Rai was hoping for better reliability on this event after a broken ball joint sidelined him at the start of the last rally. He was ninth fastest on the opener. The first of the international drivers, Jess Mangat, rounded out the top 10 and was second fastest in the ARC category, 11 seconds behind Chate. Gary Chain's first stage on Kenyan soil saw the ARC leader set the 20th fastest time, a further 19 seconds slower than Mangat. However, with three days and 12 long stages to come, he could afford to start cautiously. Mitchell was driving the Skoda in anger for the first time. It was the first stage for a Fabia S2000 on African soil, and like Tundo and Kavanagh, he was on a steep learning curve, having to adapt his driving style to the new non-turbocharged car, and he managed 14th fastest. Fahaz Khan was making a welcome return, having rolled dramatically during last year's event. This would be the first outing for the crew since then, and it would take time to get back into the swing of things. Alistair Keith had rebuilt his Subaru after rolling out of the Nanyuki event and was leading the S-Class. However, he was under pressure from Karen Patel and went quickest to open up a three-second lead in his category. Patel took victory on the previous round and was now in the title hunt for the S-Class and would be pushing Keith all the way for victory. In the F2 class, Eric Bengi was competing in his first safari rally and opened up a comfortable lead, over 30 seconds faster than his nearest class rivals. Wenda was second fastest but was off the pace and losing ground to Bengi on the day's opener. The crews then had a long 170km transport up the main Nanyuki Highway to Narrow Moro, where the longest stage of the day at Langetia awaited. There had been substantial rain in the build-up to the rally, but most of the mud holes had dried up and the drivers would have to change their notes for the second pass. Baldiv Chaga blew away the competition, going a full 18 seconds faster than anyone else, enjoying the stage and opening up a sizeable lead over his rivals. Raji Parage got into his stride going second fastest, leapfrogging him up to fourth overall as we ride on board the Evo 9 to get a feel for the stage. Duncan was a further two seconds back, taking time out of Tundo to close the gap overall to just three seconds.
Rajbir Rai went fourth fastest, but was still struggling to match the pace of Chaga. He moved into fifth overall, but was already 39 seconds off the leader. Tundo was just a second slower than Rai. He was unable to match the speed of the Mitsubishis on the long straights. In second place, he dropped 25 seconds to Chaga. Barian was driving steadily as he settled back in behind the wheel of his Subaru, setting the sixth fastest time and holding on to six overall. Meanwhile, Gary Chains upped his pace. The Ivorian went seventh fastest, climbing into the top ten overall as he found his footing on Kenyan soil. Jess Mangat was just a further four seconds slower and now led the ARC category after the demise of Jazzy Chate. Chate had been competing in a new car for this rally, but his challenge would end midway through the stage when an electrical fire broke out in the engine bay. A huge blow for the driver, meaning his title chances went up in smoke and also meaning there would now be no Kenyans registered to score points for the Africa Rally Championship Series on home soil. I don't know what happened, we just lost power and by the time we stopped it came out and we saw fire in the engine. So yeah, we just tried to put it off. Uh... Onka Rai was ninth fastest on the stage, moving him up to eighth overall. Issa Amwari rounded up the top 10, just two seconds slower than Onka on this stage, and now just seven seconds behind in ninth overall. His face shows it all. <laughs> it's been exciting so far. Yeah. Of course, Safari Rally is a challenge here, yeah, but uh, we're having a good time, and we're here to enjoy ourselves, ultimately. <laughs> Alistair Kavanagh's woeful season continued when his engine blew near the start of the stage. The Proton has so far failed to finish its first three events and Kavanagh was understandably frustrated with the new car. The Anwar brothers were embroiled in a close battle, separated by just two seconds on this stage. However, it was Azza who had the upper hand, lying in 11th overall, 13 seconds ahead of Anwar in 12th. Jasmine Chana was lying in 13th overall and settling in slowly. He was keen to record another top six result with still a lot of rallying ahead of him. Alistair Keith was once again quickest in the S-Class, but only just, beating Patel by three seconds to extend his lead and move into the top 20 at 18th overall. Patel lost out to Keith again here, and the pair were now separated by just six seconds. But in the process, they were pulling clear of the rest of their class rivals. Washira recorded a third fastest time and moved into third in class in his old Mitsubishi. The classic cars were well represented on this event. Jonathan Soman was once again setting impressive times in his Mark II Escort. And here we ride on board as Richard Heckel guides him through the stage. 50 right four is your left two. And two and right four. Yep. And then one, then, then you're onto the planes here. And then 150 is a left three. Okay. How far have we gone? Cut straight. Uh, nine. So you've got a Go left ahead. three up here and you cut straight. Yep. And then after that, cut straight. And then 150, cut straight. Left two into right two. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Okay. Um, right two. The beautiful Porsche of Aslam Khan was second fastest in class, but was already over a minute and a half down on the escort. <laughs> In his classic Datsun 160J, Rob Hellier is a veteran of the safari, having competed a number of times when the event still counted towards the WRC, even finishing as high as six overall in 1996. Oh, it's pretty awesome, you know, like this, the cylinder head that's on this car, my dad used in the 79 safari rally, so, and there's bits on the car from 78, 79 safari, so it's, it's uh, what classic rallying's all about. Eric Bengi continued his dominance of the F2 class to extend his overall lead to 39 seconds.
Safari is a fantastic thing. This is something I had wished for for many, many, many years. When I was a small kid, I used to say I want to be Joginda Singh. Uh, those were the days in the early 80s. And uh, here I am today in the safari, my maiden safari. Yeah, it's a, it's a big thing to me. Gurmit Thethi got the better of Mwenda on this stage and moved into second in class, five seconds ahead of the Toyota. <laughs> Mwenda had been struggling with a soft brake pedal and was unable to push, frustrating the title defender as he lost more ground to his rivals. As the rally arrived in Nanyuki for the first run through the spectator stage, it provided the only place that fans would be able to enjoy the action, due to the fact the event was being run on closed roads through private farms. The organisers were expecting thousands of people to make their way to the stage, which would be run on four separate occasions over the weekend. Despite the build-up of rain all around, the stage had remained dry and dusty. Baldiv Chaga took a clean sweep of stage wins on the opening day, once again fastest on the Batian stage. With just the end of day service remaining, he had head into the overnight rest halt with a 32 second advantage. Uh, it's been good, I think we've had uh, the shade fastest time with Flash in Miga. I think we had the fastest in Lengetia and uh, in the spectator stage, so keeping it together, keeping it tidy, uh, trying hard, is really hard work through those tight corners. A uh, long way to go still, very tricky, especially Logaiga. That's the one we've got to treat with a bit of respect. Ian Duncan was fourth fastest, but moved up to joint second after Tundo hit problems. The pair would end the day on exactly the same penalties, but with daylight between them and Chaga. Just take it easy, it's going to be a long rally, so um, yeah, you're not going to win it today. Um, yeah, and a big thank you to Fly540 and Don Smith, it's like very kind of them to, to help us with the rally. Tundo's Proton had developed an intermittent miss during transport and almost didn't make it to the stage. To rectify this, he would take the computer out of the sister Proton the following morning. We, we've got some electrical problem in the car where it just keeps cutting out and, and we're lucky to be here actually. My nemesis this special stage, <laughs> it almost get, didn't get through. So hopefully we can uh, sort out the problem but it's quite frustrating. Strong performances on the first day stages for Parage saw him once again second fastest. He was now just one second off a podium place in fourth overall. Lengetia I really, really enjoyed. Uh, fantastic rally stage, left lots of corners, yeah, you could commit to the notes. Um, we just drove safe and it seems to have paid off. I know Flash has had some issues, so we're closer to him than we should be. Uh, Baldi is absolutely flying, but I think we're fifth overall at the moment, so we couldn't have asked for more. Rajbir Rai was third fastest and remained in fifth overall, with expectation that he would mount his challenge the following morning. Manvia Barian set the 10th quickest time, but held on at the end of the day to 6 overall. Jas Mangat upped his pace, going 5th fastest to overhaul Onka Rai and moved it to 7th overall, thereby leading the ARC challenge. Onka Rai was just 6 seconds back in a similar Evo 10, but he would be happy to end the day in 8th without any mechanical issues. Chains was 7th fastest and moved into 9th overall, but dropped a further 14 seconds to Mangat, ending the day 2nd in the ARC standings. Bon, C'est un très beau rallye, les pistes sont magnifiques et avec des magnifiques paysages que nous n'avons pas réellement le temps de regarder, mais pour le moment les pistes sont vraiment très belles. Quentin Mitchell's first day had not run as smoothly as hoped for. With a few minor teething problems needing to be sorted out, the crew were lucky to make it through the stage at all after breaking a fan belt. Relieved to get back to service, he was now down in 25th place overall. I think the car has a 
an amazing amount of potential for here, particularly if rallying carries on in this direction, this closed road rallying. I mean, through the tight and twisty stuff, um, until 10 k's in, before we lost our power steering, she was just incredible through there. Keith would end the day as S-Class leader, but just two seconds separated him from Karen Patel. Soman, however, was supreme in the classics, dancing the little escort around the special stage. And in the F2 class, Eric Bengi was leading his first safari as his rivals hit trouble. Despite the day's competitive sections consisting of only one long stage and two shorter spectator stages, the rally had already taken its toll on the field, with two more days of hard competition still to follow. The cars continued to entertain the crowds before heading to service and the overnight rest hold. Day two of the rally would take the crews through the Turaco stage, which had been modified since the last event with a new longer middle section. It would be the most technical and roughest stage of the rally. The crews would then head for their first run through the magnificent Loldiga Hills. This would be run in reverse to recent rallies, but nonetheless as challenging. This would once again be the longest stage and could be where the rally would be won or lost. This would then be followed by a second run through the Battle in Spectator stage before crews had a chance to service ahead of repeating the Lengetia section. They would then loop back to repeat the Turaco stage before a final run through Batian. Service would bring the day's action to a close. The threat of rain that had featured the previous week during recce had disappeared and day two dawned bright and clear. Mount Kenya once again out in all its splendour and adding a magnificent backdrop to the day's action. Overnight, Tundo had fixed the glitch in his car's electronics and he was intent on catching Chaga. He went fastest and in the process cut Chaga's lead to 21 seconds. Chaga had been expecting Tundo to make his move during the Loldiga stage and knew he'd need to attack from the off to maintain his lead. Rajbir Rai was second fastest. After a sluggish first day, he was now back up to speed and moved into third overall after Duncan's retirement. Duncan had started the stage on full attack, but a puncture to the front left tyre had resulted in him opting to drive on the flat to save time. From the onboard camera, we can see just how difficult it is to control a car with a flat front tyre. The tyre eventually exploded, destroying the front wing and headlight. Continuing to press on, however, the tyre eventually ripped through the wiring harness and Duncan's rally came to a sudden stop. Mitchell, meanwhile, had sorted out the issues affecting his Skoda and was quickly getting to grips with how to drive the car. He went fourth fastest, leapfrogging from 25th right up to 14th overall. Onkarai was fifth fastest to move past Bayan and up into fifth overall, setting an identical time to Raji Baric. Baric had, however, lost out to Rajbir Rai, but all the same remained in fourth overall after Duncan's retirement. However, he held a one-minute cushion over Onka and was just seven seconds behind Rajbir. Ugandan driver Mubiru was looking impressive. Seventh fastest in his Subaru N16, moving him up into tenth overall. Mm -hmm. 
Jess Mangat had lost over a minute on this stage but remained in seventh overall and headed up the ARC standings. Chains also lost time on this twisty rough section, but with Chate out and Essa not competing, he just needed to finish this event to win the ARC title. He remained in 10th overall. Azad Anwar had now moved up to 8th overall, after setting the 11th fastest time on the stage and leapfrogging Asa, who picked up a 30 second road penalty for checking in late at the next time control. Ronak Shah was 8th fastest in the N12 as the Kisumu youngster got into his stride but was still well down in 20th overall. Imran Mogul had started relatively quietly but now set the 9th fastest time to move up to 13th overall. Rounding out the top 10 on the stage was Tejvir Rai, who, competing for the first time in his Evo 10, had some ground to make up in 16th place. Alistair Keith would have been 8th fastest on this stage, potentially moving into a comfortable S-Class lead. But after the crew checked into the start control a minute early, it earned them a minute time penalty. It handed the stage to Patel and dropped Keith to second, 35 seconds behind his rival. Patel could hardly believe his luck. After putting pressure on his rivals the previous day, he'd forced a mistake and now led the class. Malik was third fastest, just two seconds slower than Patel, and now trailed Keith by just five. Soman was once again fastest in the classics, and by far the quickest two-wheel drive car on the event, overall moving up to 24th and one place in front of the Subaru of Alistair Keith. Aslam Khan, meanwhile, was second quickest in the Porsche, holding on to second in class. Rob Hellier could not match the pace of the two more powerful classics in front of him, but was pushing the 160J as hard as possible through the tricky stage. Eric Bengi extended his lead in the F2 class with another stage win. The high-revving Run X was performing well in the tight section. Nadim Khanna was second fastest to move ahead of Gurmit Thethi and up into third in class. Dennis Mwenda was also getting faster and managed to overhaul Fethi to climb back into second, but was still almost two minutes down on Bengi. Fethi had been struggling with an underpowered engine and dropped off the pace, losing ground to his rivals. The SPV class was also well represented on this rally, with Nikhil Sachania leading the group in his hybrid Mitsubishi. He's become a regular competitor despite having lost the use of his legs in an accident. His specially modified throttle and brake systems meaning he controls the car entirely with his hands, an inspiration to everyone who meets him. Behind him in the class was the Land Rover Tomcat of Rupesh Chuhan, the beautiful sounding V8 engine rumbling through the stages. The crews then moved to the longest stage of the event, the 54-kilometer Loldiga Ranch stage. This magnificent section took the crews through breathtaking scenery with unspoilt wildernesses that brought back memories of an era when drivers would frequently meet wild animals crossing the roads in front of them. The drivers would no longer have to worry about meeting oncoming vehicles though, so could keep their eyes peeled for wildlife. Baldiv Chaga understood that this would be a decisive stage and, being first on the road, had no option but to attack. Knowing his rivals would be hard on his heels, he was once again fastest and emerged from the stage with a 2 minute 39 second lead, despite having to slow down for this herd of elephants, a tortoise and a herd of zebra. Tundo's challenge faded after he was forced to stop and change a tyre, costing him just over two minutes. It was frustrating for the crew, who would undoubtedly have been quicker, but were now forced to settle for second and hope Chaga struck trouble. Mm -hmm. 
Mitchell was proving he was a fast learner, guiding his new Skoda S2000 to the second fastest time. Despite being a minute slower than Chaga, it was still enough to see him move up to an impressive fourth overall. Manvir Barian now moved into a podium position with a third fastest time, benefiting from the demise of Rajbir Rai, who had set off on a blistering attack before puncturing. He was forced to stop and change the tyre, costing him over two minutes. Setting off again, determined to recover some time over the last 15 kilometres, he lasted just one of them before getting caught out by the loose surface and going off, damaging his gearbox. His rally was over, within just a few kilometres of where a similar mistake had put him out on the previous round. After a sluggish start, Azza Anwar went fourth fastest, the longer stage suiting his style, and he too moved up the leaderboard to finish the stage fifth overall. Imran Mogul was sixth fastest, and with this moved into sixth overall. The stage had claimed several top drivers. Seventh fastest was Tejvir Rai, gradually getting to grips with his new Evo 10 and moving into eighth overall. Duncan Mubiru had now climbed to seventh overall and was the best placed foreign driver after fellow Ugandan Jazz Mangat was forced to retire with a broken ball joint. Steve Gashiru set the ninth fastest time and moved into the top ten, a fine drive from this Subaru driver. There'd been more consistent driving from Jasmeet Channa, improving his pace on each stage to climb to ninth overall. And as the only ARC competitor left in the event, Gary Chains now simply needed to finish to secure the championship title. He was lying in 11th overall. Mahesh Halai's Subaru now sat in 12th after a careful drive through the long stage. But Raji Parage's challenge fell by the wayside after a turbo pipe came loose and he ran most of the stage without any boost. It proved expensive. 15 minutes lost saw him plummeting down the leaderboard to 20th. There was a repeat of mechanical failure for Anka Rai too. This time a rear diff let go and he was once again forced to retire. A seemingly never-ending run of bad luck. In the S-Class, it was Patel once again setting the pace, beating Keith by just one second over the 54 grueling kilometres. Yeah, today was attack. Today was the, the, the strategy was to attack, so we have been doing that with a few mistakes. As I said, it's not, not too bad. Keith was concerned that his engine seemed to be running too hot, forcing him to turn off the anti-lag. It didn't slow him down too much, though, and he matched Patel for pace on the stage. Uh, we're, we're having to manage the engine temperatures, uh, so we're not running with our anti-lag or anything like that, but, uh, you know, we're, we're managing, so not a big deal. Malik was once again third fastest to keep hold of his podium position, ahead of David Keone in his old Impreza GC8. After what had been an attacking rally to this point, Jonathan Soman was now forced to back off when a steering bracket came loose, in turn affecting his handling. But as we ride on board, we can see the carnage of broken cars as he winds his way through the stage. And then 200 into your left three. Lodaiga's beautiful. Uh, there were no elephants in the path today. There were on Reki, but uh, it's just beautiful up here. And this is our beautiful country, Kenya. Aslam Khan was quickest of the classics and narrowed his gap behind Soman to just 58 seconds. Helia also made it through the long stage, the classics proving to be more durable than many of their more modern counterparts. Eric Bengi went fastest whilst his rival struck trouble, but with a huge lead he could now afford to also back off.
Hitting a mud hole led to a blocked radiator and subsequent engine overheating issues from Wender, who, despite limping through the stage, retired, and in doing so saw any hope of retaining his title dashed. Went through a mud hole and uh, some matope blocked the, uh, the radiator, and from there our cooling was not as uh, efficient. So we, we lost a lot of time, and by the time we came into the control, we realized that we were over 30 minutes late, so we decided to retire to at least save the engine for the next event. Gurmit Fethi, however, did make it through the stage to move into second in class, but was by now far too far behind to mount a serious challenge for the lead. Jeff Mays was third fastest and moved into a class podium position, the crew clearly enjoying themselves even if not entirely focused on the notes. The crews then returned to Nanuki for another run through the Batian stage and the first service of the day. Chaga was once again supreme as he consolidated his lead with Bayan 54 seconds behind Tundo. Tundo's only option was to keep pushing and hopefully force Chaga into making a mistake. With seven stages to go, the event was far from over. It had been a long morning and the Lol Daiga section had taken its toll on the field. But whilst the leaders of each class were in comfortable positions, there were still plenty of stages to run and anything could happen. After service, the crews then headed to Lengetia for a second run through this stage and Chaga once again proved fastest, taking advantage of the long straights to keep Tundo at bay. This was followed by a repeat of the Turaco stage where Raji Baraj set his first fastest time of the rally, Chaga and Tundo again filling the other top positions. We pick up the action now on the final run through the Batian spectator stage, where the crowds had once again turned out to cheer on their heroes. But not to be outdone, the Kenyan Air Force jets were also saluting the drivers by making a series of low-level passes. Parage picked up his second fastest time of the day as he battled to recover from the earlier turbo pipe failure on the Lol Diger stage, ending the day in 13th place. Chaga and Tundo once again set identical times. The leader ended the day with a 2 minute 38 second cushion, which would be difficult for Tundo to make up unless Chaga hit trouble. Loldaiga this morning was actually very, very technical, very tricky. I just tried to keep it clean and tidy, which I managed. Uh, I thought I was losing time, but I ended up uh, tops because everyone else had an issue there, so uh, I think my strategy has paid off. All in all, it's uh, it, they've been fantastic roads and sections, and all closed, no cars coming towards us, and uh, so yeah, I really hope the FIA uh, appreciate what what has uh, been put on. <laughs> Bayan, meanwhile, was driving his own rally, fourth fastest on the stage, and in third overall, he was a minute ahead of Quentin Mitchell. No, I'm, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, this is my third safari. So, they're yeah, just having fun, really. Yeah, I would have wished to be a little bit faster, but um, I missed a few rallies this year, so it puts you a little out of shape. Mitchell, meanwhile, was having the drive of the rally. Having started the day in 25th overall, he had recovered to end the day in a remarkable fourth position, the new Skoda's debut going more than well. Jasmeet Channa went fifth fastest and would end the day in eighth overall. Ronak Shah, meanwhile, seemed to fare well on the spectator stage. Going seventh fastest, the young driver moved into tenth overall after another good day behind the wheel. Mubiru ended the day six overall and as the top placed foreign driver was impressing his Kenyan rival with his aggressive driving style. In ninth was Imran Mogul, 
fastest, but picking up a 70-second penalty for arriving seven minutes late at the start of the stage. The crew would then miscalculate their times and checked in seven minutes early at the first time control in the morning, losing seven minutes and dropping down to 18th overall. Steve Mwangi set his first top 10 time, moving him into 17th overall. With both his brother and cousin out, Amanraj Rai was driving cautiously, keen to get his Evo 10 to the finish in his first full event. He recorded the 11th fastest time and ended the day 12th overall. Aza Anwar could afford to cruise through the stage, setting the 12th fastest time. He was fifth overall, but was driving in something of a vacuum, with Mobiru over two minutes behind him. Tejvir Rai ended the day in seventh overall, his debut in the new Evo 10 going very well but he was now coming under pressure from Chana, breathing down his neck and just four seconds behind. On his safari debut, Gary Chains was ninth and was still on course to clinch the Africa Rally Championship crown, just needing to finish the event. Steve Gucciaru almost threw it all away after rolling on this hairpin left. Fortunately, the car landed back on its wheels and he barely missed a beat. He recovered to finish the stage in 19th overall. After a final service where the mechanics would have plenty of work, the crews returned to the rest halt for the overnight Parc Ferme and a chance to get a good night's sleep. The first stage the following morning would again take them out on the rally's longest section. The event far from over. The final day of the event would take the crews back through the 54-kilometre Loldiga stage before tackling stages at Cosima Farm near Tamal. The first stage, dubbed Wheatlands, was new, fast and smooth, before a return to the airstrip section which would be run in the same direction as the previous Nanuki event. The crews would then tackle the Batian stage one final time before the event ended at the service park where the podium and prize-giving ceremony would take place. Another beautiful, crisp morning greeted the drivers as they gathered at the Parc Ferme, ready to tackle the final day. For most, it was a question of hoping to reach the final stages. <laughs> Just take it as it comes, uh, two and a half minutes on Tundo. It's nothing to be comfortable about, so I think you just have to keep it clean and tidy. Even if he beats us through that stage, it, I don't really mind, uh, as long as we can just stay ahead of him by the end of the day. Uh, that's, that's our main concern. The battle up front was not over, and despite the large time gaps, a single puncture could change the leadership in an instant. I'm just going to go as per normal, just try and keep the, the, a good pace up, and uh, there's no, no chance of catching Baldy. It's two and a half minutes, and we've got uh, 60 Ks or something like that. So just try and keep second. Um, if he has a problem, then that's all good, but if he doesn't, then second is good. The first challenge of the day will be a repeat of the magnificent Loldiger section. Jago would be first on the road and, not wanting to push too much, he went fourth fastest. We ride on board with the leader as he clears the road, encountering plenty of wildlife warming themselves in the early morning sun. The crew even had time to enjoy this herd of elephant as they raced across the plains in the middle of the stage. Tundo, on the other hand, was in full attack mode. It would be make or break for him in his bid to take the lead off Chaga. At 1 minute and 23 seconds faster, he managed to reduce the gap to 1 minute and 15. But with only three short stages left, he was unlikely to take the lead. Mitchell was second fastest in his bid to catch Bayan for a podium position. And despite the long straights, the S2000 was looking capable of making up some ground on this technical section. Bayan was third fastest, but lost over a minute to Mitchell, his third position coming under threat with just a 12-second cushion to the chasing Skoda.
Azza Anwar went fifth fastest, the veteran cementing his fifth overall position. Tejvir Rai was sixth fastest, but could only take 15 seconds out of Nibiru and trailed the Ugandan by over a minute in the battle for six. A mistake had seen Mogul slip out of the top ten, but keen to make amends for this error, he went eighth fastest, recovering three positions to move up to 15th. Karan Patel was ninth fastest, overhauling Ronak Shah to move into ninth overall. With his lead over Keith now over four minutes, he looked as if he was on course to win the S-Class. Jasmine Channa lost 45 seconds to Rai and would have to settle for eighth, not wanting to take any risks and throw away valuable points that would see him move up to fourth in the overall KNRC title race. Steve Mwangi was 11th fastest, which helped him leapfrog from 15th overall up to 11th. After Gary Chain's mechanics left a suspension mounting bolt loose, the rear right strut eventually broke. He limped through the stage but was eventually forced to retire. And although he remains the ARC series leader, if Mohamed Essa opts to compete for the last round in Madagascar, Chains will also be forced to compete to secure the championship. Alistair Keith backed off after another time penalty for a jump start on a previous stage, which meant the gap to Patel was now too great. He needed to finish to conserve his lead in the S-Class title race. Malik remained in third in the class, though. A win in the first event in Malindi had been followed by a heavy crash on the second round, and he was taking a more measured approach to his driving style. David Keone was fourth in the S-Class and was lying 21st overall as he bid to get his old Impreza around and record a safari finish. Jonathan Soman now moved into 20th overall, once again fastest of the classics and enjoying the chance to see what the little escort could do after having to slow with a steering problem on the previous run through Loldiga. Ranjit Semi also danced his little escort through the stage, navigated by Ian Freestone, who's more often found in the driver's seat. The pair were holding on to fourth in the classic class. Eric Bengi emerged from the stage as the only F2 contender remaining after all his rivals fell by the wayside. He would just need to finish now to record a memorable class victory on his first safari rally. The crews had three more stages to tackle, the first of which would take them on a new section to Cosima Farm near Timau. The Wheatland section was reduced from its original length and there would now be little chance to make up any significant time in the fight for position. Parage was determined to show what could have been as he was once again fastest, beating Chaga by a second, but remaining in 15th overall. The long straights were suiting the Evo 10s better, and now Chaga was able to take back four seconds as he cemented his lead over Tundo. Bayan was third fastest to take back three seconds from Mitchell, but the fight for the podium was still not over. Try as he might, Tundo could not match the top speed of the Evo 10. With the Proton sitting on its limiter, he was in desperate need of extra stage miles to make a difference, and would have to concede that victory was beyond his grasp this time. Mitchell also suffered on the long straight, but potentially could still catch Bayan if the Subaru driver made any errors in the final stages. Galib Haji recorded his first top 10 time in the Evo 10 and was looking forward to recording a finish after a string of retirements. Mahesh Halai once again drove steadily to finish 12th overall as we ride on board to get a feel for the short run through the wheat fields.
The next stage took the crews back to the Kasima airstrip section. This would be the only stage that would be a replica for the Nanyuki event. The section was fast and flowing with only a minor change as the road moved around the dam that was now complete. Never one to back off though, Tundo was fastest. However, the eventual gap to Chaga would remain over a minute and the Proton driver would have to settle for second overall. The fight for the KNRC title remains with Tundo moving back up into second ahead of Chate. Chaga could now afford to ease off on his way to another fantastic victory. He'd led from the off, managing his lead perfectly and had made no mistakes. The win means he not only defends his safari crown, but moves back into the lead in the overall title race with two rounds remaining. Marianne was not about to concede his podium place and went second fastest to once again get the better of Mitchell and with just the super special remaining, his advantage of 21 seconds means he records his best safari rally result, third overall. Mitchell would eventually finish fourth, but could be extremely proud of his achievement. Battling through the field after teething problems on the first day, his first event in a left-hand drive car and the first time a Skoda S2000 had competed on African soil. Aza Anwar came through to finish fifth overall. Another solid result, and with so many safari finishes under his belt that stretched back to the early 1980s. Tejvir Rai moved ahead of Mubiru to finish in six overall on his first outing in the Evo 10. After a string of retirements in his Impreza, he'd be hoping this result and the new car would signal a change of fortune for the remaining rounds in the season. Duncan Mubiru's aggressive style finally caught up with him as he rolled on the final Batian stage. He managed to get through it though, but dropped to seventh overall. However, a fantastic result for the visiting Ugandan. Jasmine Chana held on through the final two stages to finish eighth overall. A model of consistency, he moves into fourth in the title race after finishing every round of the season so far. Karen Patel finished ninth overall on his first safari in an ageing Subaru GC8. With it, he takes the S-Class win and moves to within 50 points of Keith in the race for the championship title. Ronak Shah rounded out the top 10, another excellent rally from the young Kisumu driver who will be looking forward to returning to home soil for the next event. Keith finished second in class after a timing error and two jump starts destroyed any chance of beating Patel. On the road, the pair were evenly matched and whilst he retains the title lead, the pair will resume their battle at the next event in Kisumu. Malik held on to round out the podium and record his first safari rally finish in the old Evo 6. Soman took a clean sweep of stage wins and with it victory in the classic class. Finishing 20th overall with Khan and Helio rounding out the podium, it had been another great event for the crew and a memorable safari finish. Bengi held on to record his first safari rally finish. As the only F2 competitor to finish the event, he'd led from the off and was never under any real pressure. He's now a real contender for the championship title. The crews returned to the Batian Spectator stage for a final run. Keen to put on a show, but without taking any risks, we now ride on board with the rally winner for the final time.
once the heat of battle is over, Tundo is quick to congratulate his rivals in the spirit of friendship and good sportsmanship. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, been actually one of the most difficult events we've done, as short as it was at the sprint stages. Uh, we've had some seriously interesting moments uh, with Flash snapping at our heels all the time. Unfortunately, had a puncher yesterday. Uh, that gave us a bit of an advantage. Uh, today we used that advantage to go through Lollega a little slower. I think that's where the rally was won and lost yesterday in Lollega. With the same rally we lost out, uh, same um, stage we lost out in the last event. I think uh, we gave that stage a little bit of respect and got through it clean and tidy. And that's, I think, why we're here, definitely. I'm just so happy to get it back in second. We almost didn't. The throttle sensor stuck between the Lollegas and the Kisima. But uh, no, it's good and I'm glad I'm here. Second is good. Yeah, no, very, very happy with uh, the finish that we have we got. And, um, it's probably the best. Uh, it's actually the best result for me so far. And uh, getting that on the, on the safari is even better. Having put on an event worthy of its international standing and reputation, and having run the rally on closed roads for the first time in line with modern world rally standards, the organisers will hope they've moved a step closer to proving that the event deserves its place on the World Rally Championship calendar. After an intense post-event scrutineering, the final prize-giving ceremony was held beside the Batian Spectator Stage and Service Park. 35 crews lined up at the finish to add their names to the record books. Having held off all weekend, the rain finally came, but didn't put a damper on celebrations. Baldiv Chaga retains his Safari Rally crown for the second year in a row, and the defending Kenyan champion returns to the top of the table in his bid to win the 2014 crown. As we look at the championship boards, Chaga and Tundo move back into the top two places. 54 points separates them, with 160 points still on offer. Chate slips to third with his retirement, whilst Jasmeet Channa moves into fourth ahead of Rajbir Rai. Keith rounds out the top 10 overall in his old Impreza. In the S-Class, Keith remains in the driving seat, but Karen Patel is closing in fast, and the battle could go down to the wire on the final two rounds. Much will depend on how they fare in Kisumu. Leonardo Varese retains the F2 lead after all his rivals fail to finish. Eric Bengi leapfrogs into second overall with this safari win and is now in with a real chance of taking the title. Dennis Wenders' hopes of retaining his crown are fading away after another retirement. The next round of the championship takes the crews to the shores of Lake Victoria and the sugar plantations around Kisumu for round seven. With all the championship titles still up for grabs, we can expect a full complement of cars to line up for another exciting event. We'll see you there.